chat on. If anybody else needs to write in the chat. Okay, so what we are doing today is um, we are doing a new chapter called Function Operations. And um, this is a chapter that, like I said, we do in my note package, though this lesson actually corresponds to three lessons in your workbook. And we'll do this chapter in two days. So what it refers to when it says function operations, so a few things. Remember that functions could be written as like f of x, that's a function, or I could say g of x, that's a function, or I could say h of x, that's a function. When it talks about operations on these functions, what we are going to do is the operations are sum, which is adding functions, difference, which is subtracting functions, um, we could multiply functions and we could divide functions. So there's four operations that we could um, perform on various functions. And the reason why I call them different letters like f of x, g of x, h of x, is this would represent one graph and I call that graph f of x. This would represent a second graph, g of x, and this would represent a third graph, h of x. And then to those graphs or to these functions, I could perform these various operations. So on your first page, um, what it has is I want you to write this, though we will actually talk about this tomorrow. So if you see F and then bracket G of X, how that's read is F of g of x. And this is a function inside another function. It's called composition functions. And this again will be done in lesson two. So let's actually write lesson two. This will be tomorrow and it's called composition of functions. So composition of functions. Okay. What we're going to do today are these four operations here. So this would be our sum operation. So it's written one of two ways. It's written f plus g of x. And whenever I see this written, I always change that to, I prefer um, when I see this saying, okay, this is f of x plus g of x. So this is sort of my preferred way that you're always going to see me write it. Um, if they gave me this in a question, f minus g of x, I would say, okay, I would rewrite that as f of x minus g of x. This would be a difference. Difference is subtraction. Um, f times g of x, again, I would write it f of x times or right next to each other g of x. Uh, this is the product of two functions. And then f of x over g of x, this is the quotient of two different functions. And the two different functions just happen to be f of x and g of x. Um, one important thing to note is these functions here, these four, are not on your formula sheet. And sometimes students would say to me, okay, Mrs. King, do you want me to put these on my study guide? Like, should these be on the study guide? And I say no, because honestly, the way I look at this, these are really self-explanatory, right? If you see F plus G, you say to yourself, that's just a sum function. If you see F minus G, it's a difference. F times G and F divided by G. So these are not on your formula sheets, but don't even bother putting them on your study guide. You won't need to do that. These are uh, different notations. So you need to be able to know and understand both. So it could be written like often the diploma will give this notation here. And then my students tend to convert it to this notation. So you need to be able to understand and work between these two notations um, interchangeably. Okay. Okay. So let's look at uh, this page here, which is we're going to start combining functions. And what we're going to be do is we're going to be adding functions. So again, if you see f plus g of x, what I do is instead of writing this, I say, okay, that is really the f of x function plus the g of x function. So how we're going to start with adding functions is I'm going to show you what this would look like graphically. And then I'm going to show you algebraically and we'll go through all of the operations, both graphically and algebraically, and I'll show you how to verify on your calculator. 
So what it says is it says, given the following functions, so f of x and g of x, it wants you to sketch the graph of f of x plus g of x. So I'm going to call that new function h of x. Okay, so when we add my f of x plus g of x, I'm going to get a new graph and I'm going to call that new graph h of x. Okay, so how does this work? Um, in order to add these two functions together, so these are both two linear graphs, right? What it says is it says to pick nice points and make a table of values. So what I mean by nice points is you want to pick points that apply to both graphs. So for example, if I pick X is negative four, right? Here's negative four. I could see that um, the Y value on both of my functions. So negative four is a nice point to pick. I wouldn't pick negative five, for example. And the reason why I wouldn't pick negative five is because I truly don't know, like on this red graph, what that corresponding Y value is. So negative five wouldn't be a good point to pick. Negative four is a good point to pick. Um, I'm going to go to negative three. Nope, not a good point to pick. Negative two is a good point because I could see that point, the Y value on both my graphs. So let's pick X values of negative four, negative two. Uh, negative one is not a good point. Let's pick zero, X value of zero. So once you have um, X values that you could find the Y values on both graphs, what you wanna then do is we wanna write down um, the Y values on F of X and the Y values on G of X. So I'm going to use um, for F of X, I'm gonna use blue. So this is my F of X line at negative four, which is right here, what is the corresponding Y value? And you get negative three, okay? Then I'm gonna to go to negative two. So on this blue graph here, negative two is right here on the graph and that corresponding Y value is zero. Then I go to zero and I find where's zero on that blue graph. The blue graph is my F of X graph. That corresponding Y value is at three. Okay, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna do the same thing. Now I'm gonna switch and I'm gonna use a red pen and I'm going to find the Y values, the corresponding Y values on my G of X graph, which is my red graph. So when X is negative four, here's negative four on G of X, that Y value is zero. Okay. Negative two now. Here was negative two. Go to your red graph, which is right here, and that corresponding y value is negative one. And then I need to go to x is zero. Here's zero on my red graph. The corresponding y value is negative two. Okay, then what we do is if you have a highlighter, we are going to highlight this, apply the operations on the Y values. So when we do this unit called function operations, the operation always occurs to the Y values. So the operation is addition, it's sum. So I need to add these Y values. So um, the new Y value, negative three plus zero would be negative three. So the point on my new graph, X's stay the same. And then I've got my new Y value at negative three. The next point, X's stay the same. And the new Y value is when I sum these operations uh, or these two Y values. So that would be negative one. And then X's stay the same. So my new graph H of X, so this is the coordinates on H of X. I'm gonna sum these two Y values and that new coordinate, nope, would be at one. Okay, so now I always tell students like to do different colors, right? So if this is in blue and this is in red, I'm gonna let's say pick green for my H of X. So I'm going to plot h of x at negative 4, negative 3. x is negative 4, y is negative 3. Negative 2 um, 
negative one. Be right here, uh, zero and one, X is zero, Y is one. Okay, these two graphs were linear graphs. Your combination graph is also going to be linear. So if you have your ruler and a pen, uh, take your ruler out and you've got to connect it through these dots. So if we start with two linear graphs, and we add them, we're going to end with a linear graph. I'll talk about how we figure out domain and range a bit later. And I'm going to put arrowheads over here, okay? So this green graph is the sum of f of x and g of x, and I'm going to call this graph h of x, okay? That green graph there. Okay, what are the domain and range of each function? So f of x and g of x were linear uh, graphs and the domain of a linear graph is xcr. This is also a linear graph and the domain of that is going to be xcr. So for all three functions, the domain was or is xcr or in interval notation, you could say negative infinity to positive infinity. It is the same for the range. The range for all three graphs is YER or negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay. Okay, now what we're going to do is we are going to do the algebra. So the algebra says this. Given the equations, so what they've actually done is um, this is the actual equation for the f of x line. So f of x, I believe, was this blue line. So it has a y-intercept of 3. And if I go here, there's a y-intercept. This is written in the form of y is equal to mx plus b. This was my blue line. This is now they're giving me the equation of my red line. So it was negative one over two X minus two. The Y intercept of the red line was negative two. What they want me to do now is they, they will say algebraically, determine an explicit equation for Y is equal to F plus G of X. Okay, so the first thing I do is I say, okay, they want an explicit equation for this, uh, but I'm gonna actually call that Y is equal to F of X plus g of x. y is equal to f of x was my blue line, right? So what I have to do is I have to take this f of x equation, 3 over 2x plus 3. Then to that equation, they want me to add g of x. g of x was this guy here. So I'm going to put uh, this function in a separate bracket, negative 1 over 2x minus 2. So the explicit equation for my new h of x is going to be this f of x plus this g of x. So let's get rid of the bracket, 3x over 2 plus 3 um, plus a negative gives me minus 1 over 2x. And then remember, this is really an invisible 1 here, right? So uh, positive times a negative gives me a negative. And this one here, positive times a negative gives me a negative 2. So I've just basically gotten rid of these brackets is all I've done. Okay, so the explicit equation now is going to be of my new function, y, which is equal to, actually, let's even call this new function h of x. Because I like calling, like, if we had f of x, g of x, let's call our new combined function h of x. Okay, we need to add our like terms. So x's go together. And I'm just going to do it off to the side. I've got 3 over 2 minus 1 over 2. So my common denominator is 2. Or sorry, my, um, yeah, my denominator is 2. 3 minus 1 is 2 over 2. 2 over 2 reduces to just 1x. So 1x. And then let's do our constants. So 3 minus 2 would give me plus 1. 
So the line of h of x should have this um, explicit equation of 1x plus 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go to my graph and I'm just going to look at it. Was my y-intercept of that linear graph 1? So I'm just going to have a check. Yep, and it was. But I'm going to show you how you could further verify this. Okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you how to use your calculator to verify uh, the explicit equation. So the explicit equation that we got was 1x plus 1. I'm going to show you how to do that using a new feature on your calculator called VARS. And you've never used this VARS before. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So if everybody could take out their calculators. And what we do is, this is how we verify that we did this correctly. So I want you to go to, into y is equal to, and I want you to put in the equation for f of x, right? So f of x was that blue line, and it was 3 over 2x plus 3. So I always like writing my fractions in brackets, right? So this guy up here, I'm just going to, if I was to enter this on my calculator, how I'm going to enter this is, I'm going to enter 3 over 2 in its own bracket, and I'm going to enter negative 1 half in its own bracket. Okay, so I'm going to put y1 is going to be my f of x equation, and y2 is going to be my g of x equation. So on your calculators, enter in y1, open bracket, 3 divided by 2, close that bracket, x plus 3. In y2, let's enter our g of x function, which was open bracket, negative 1 divided by 2, close that bracket, x minus 2. Okay, now we don't actually want to graph these two, right? We've already graphed these. We want to we figure out, well, what's the combined operation when we add these two functions? So what I need you guys to do is you need to deselect these equations so that they're not graphed. So go over to your equal sign and hit enter for both of the equal signs. And then if the X is not highlighted, you, it means you've deselected it and it will not actually graph these when I hit graph. What I wanna do though, is I wanna graph this function plus this function. So how we do that is we, um, have a function on our calculator called VARS. So what I want you to do is in Y3, I want you guys to hit VARS and scroll over to Y VARS. And what we're graphing is functions. So hit number one. I want to graph the first function. So Y1. And then tell me what the operation we want to do. We were adding these two functions. Now I've got to tell the calculator to... Um, through VARS to select Y2. So go back to VARS, go over to Y VARS. It's always gonna be a function. And then I'm gonna hit number two. So Y1 plus Y2. So we could graph this, right? And that's our graph there. So you could say to yourself, okay, it looks fairly similar, right? To the graph that we did on the first page. But what we wanna check is we wanna check that uh, that graph is indeed one X plus one. So what I'm going to do is back to my calculator. I'm going to go back to y is equal to. And in y4, I'm going to type in 1x or just x, it doesn't matter, plus 1. Now when I hit graph, it's quickly going to show you the black line and it's going to show you a pink line. If the pink line goes right on top of the black line, that means it's the exact same graph and our explicit equation is correct. So now when I hit graph, there it happened. The pink line quickly went over that black line. That's how you could verify for your test that your explicit equation is correct. So you would never get any marks for doing VARS. And in fact, I wouldn't even say verify or check using VARS. It's just something that you would do on your own if you wanted to um, verify that your explicit equation is in fact correct. Okay, so that's how we do the sum of functions. So let's do now the difference of functions, and then um, I'll pick some people to give me points on here. So again, f minus g of x, what that 
uh, equation represents is f of x minus g of x. So it represents this over here. And then what we are going to graph is we are going to graph in green, I'll do h of x. Okay, so again, we have to pick really nice points. So let's pick the same points that we had on our other graph, because this is the exact same graph. Now we're just going to be subtracting the functions. So we had negative four selected, we had negative two selected, and we had zero. And then in blue, I'm going to find the corresponding y values on f of x. And then in red, I'll write the corresponding y values on g of x. So the blue y values, which would be my f of x graph at negative four, it was negative three. At negative two, it was zero. And at zero, the corresponding y value was three. You're gonna then do the same and find the y values on your g of x graph using um, the original x values. So at negative four, that point there is at zero. At uh, negative two, down here, that corresponding y value is negative one. And then at uh, zero down here, the corresponding y value is negative two. So now it wants me to do the difference between the functions. So you need to subtract the y values and the x values stay the same. So what I want you to do is I want you guys to quickly write down what these three y values were. And then when I pick different people, I'm gonna pick three different people, I want you to give me the y value and then what the new um, coordinate would be. So it's the same x value and the new y value. Okay, so I'm going to pick uh, Haley first, just to see if you're here. Haley, what did you get for your Y value for this uh, first point? Um, yes, and what would that corresponding coordinate be? Uh, it would be negative four comma negative three. Yes, negative four comma negative three. Um, Emmanuel, could you tell me what you got for your Y value for the second coordinate here? One. One is correct. And what is your uh, ordered pair? Negative two, negative one. Perfect. Negative two, common negative one. Uh, Jada, could you tell me your corresponding y value for this third point? Jada, oh, perfect. Yep. Do you want to say it again? Jada, I never heard that, but I could tell you're not muted. Okay, Jada, I can't actually hear you, but I know you're there, so I'm just going to pick somebody else. Um, Neil, do you want to tell me what you got for the Y value here? Five. Five, and what's your point? Uh, zero comma five. Zero comma five. Okay, so let's graph. Uh, these three points and then draw our h of x graph. So negative four, negative three would be that point. Negative two and, uh, sorry, this should be one. So negative two and one would be right here and zero comma five would be right here. So if your two original graphs were linear and when you add or subtract functions, the combination function will also be linear, okay? So that, that's only for adding or subtracting. It won't apply uh, when we uh, multiply or divide, but that's the rule for adding and subtracting. Okay, so then what I want you to do is I want you to put arrowheads uh, at the end of your lines to indicate that it is a linear function, and I'm gonna call this h of x. What are the domain and range of all three functions? Again, they're all linear. So the domain of all three functions, choose either set builder or interval notation. 
but the domain for all three would be XER and the range for all three would be YER. If you are going to calculus, make sure you are really good with interval. Okay, let's subtract these uh, two functions now algebraically, and then we're gonna check and verify using bars. So y is equal to f minus g of x. The equation is going to be again, f of x minus g of x. So f of x minus g of x. So my new equation is my f of x equation, which was this guy right here, minus, my g of x equation. Always put that second equation in a bracket. Okay, so I find students when they do algebraically, um, they never get the sum explicit equations wrong. They will get the difference wrong if they do not distribute this negative one. So all that negative one simply does is it changes the sign in that bracket. So three over two x plus three, a uh, negative and a negative is going to give me a positive 1 over 2x, and then negative and a negative is going to give me a plus 2. We are now going to add our like terms, so let's add those x's together. So I have 3 over 2 plus 1 half. When you add or subtract uh, fractions, just make sure that your denominators are the same, and you add the numerators. 4 over 2 is equal to 2. So h of x, I'm going to call my new function, is equal to 2x, right? 3 over 2x plus 1 over 2x is going to give you 2x. And then let's add our constants together. 3 plus 2 is going to be 5. Okay, let's verify this using vars. So we should have uh, this typed into y1 on our calculator already and this typed into y2. So let's go back to our graphing calculators. And what we want to clear is we just want to clear y3 and y4. Okay, so we're doing the difference. So we're doing this function, subtracting this function. So through vars, let's select y1. So vars, y vars, these are all going to be functions and we're going to select y1. The operation is subtract vars, go over to y vars number one, and now I'm going to subtract y2. What I'm going to do is without even graphing it, let's go to uh, y4 and let's put in our explicit equation of 2x plus 5. So that guy, 2x plus 5. Okay, so let's graph, make sure these are deselected. And then um, if these are the exact same line, we did the explicit equation correctly and it would be verified. So that's how I verify that we did this correct. So now that is what we've just completed now is we've uh, graphically and algebraically added two functions and subtracted two functions. So we've done two out of the four operations. What I wanna do now is I'm going to show you how you would this would look on a graph, okay? So I think this is page four. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the first one and then I'm gonna pick two different people to do B and C for me. So what it says is it says, uh, use the graphs of F of X and G of X to evaluate the following. And A says F plus G at four, again, how I would rewrite this, so I don't like how it's written for A. What this means is it's F of four plus, because it's a sum function, G of four. So we know that if it's in the bracket, this is referring to my X coordinate. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to find uh, on my F graph, which is my blue graph, what is f of four? So how I do that is I go to four on my um, Cartesian plane, and then I say, what is that point? Um, f at, when x is four, why does that look like?
oh, sorry, it's right here. F of four, the corresponding Y value is five. I can show right over here. So F of four is equal to five. G at four, so when X is four, what's the Y value on your G graph? So then go to four again, and now find G of four. This point here would be G of four, which is three. You perform your operation on the Y values, and my new point would be eight. So if I was adding those two, I would have a point at four comma eight, but the answer is eight, okay? So what I want you guys to do is I want you to do B, which is going to be F of negative four plus G of negative four. And I want you to do C, which is F of negative five plus G of negative five. And again, I'm just going to be asking for the answers. And then we will do D together, which is going to be F of negative six plus G negative six. Okay, so if you guys could do B, C, and D. So at negative four, Find the corresponding Y value on F and find the corresponding Y value on G and then add those two together. Maria, what are you getting for B? F plus G of negative four. Um, I got six. Six is the answer. Uh, Carson, what are you getting for C? F of negative five plus G of negative five. Seven. Yes, seven is the answer. To do D together, um, F at negative six. So here's negative six. And F at negative six is nine. G at negative six. If I said, well, what would G of negative six be? What happens is it does not exist. Does not exist, right? Because the smallest x value I could have for my g graph is negative five. So if I said, well, what is f plus g of negative six? Whenever we have a point at that one of the points does not exist, we say it is undefined. If you go to calculus, you will write in calculus for undefined. That point does not exist. Now, one thing that I want you to star and just write off to the side, like the reason for this, and she sort of said it in her videos, is what happens is when we are picking X values. So when you pick X values. You need to choose X values that are common to both functions. So choose X values that are common to both functions. So this is what I often tell students to put on their study guide. And it's going to have to do when we get really into domain later on. Um, and I say, what's the domain of the co combined graph, which I'll show you that right away. But uh, what we always do is when we're picking X values, we have to pick X values that are common to both functions. So yes, at negative six exists on my F of X graph. But this, the, the first X value that I would actually pick that's common to both Five. Actually, I wouldn't even pick negative five, right? Because it doesn't 
um, it's not a nice, oh yeah, it is a nice point on here. So the smallest X value I would pick is negative five. Uh, and then I could pick, let's say uh, negative four would be good X value. Um, I wouldn't pick negative three. I wouldn't even pick negative two. I'd pick negative one, right? So you wanna pick X values when we choose them that are common to both. Negative six is an X value that does not exist on this red function. So I would never have chosen negative six to begin with. Okay, for this question here, this is gonna be similar to a question you're going to do in your workbook for homework when we're done this lesson. Um, what it is saying is it is saying given P of X, so I'm given this function and I'm given Q of X, this function, what they want me to evaluate is P minus Q, right? So the difference of those two functions when X is negative three. There's actually two different methods that I'm going to show you that you could do to determine this. And students have a favorite method. Like you'll see when we do these two methods a couple times, uh, you guys will be drawn to one of the two methods, but they are both, um, I'll, I'll probably show you later on what I would say the preferred method is. But again, if you like one over the other, you're always just going to do that. So what this means, this means P of negative three minus Q of negative three. That's what this means, right? So in my P function, I'm going to put in negative three for X and evaluate what that is. And then in my Q function, I'm gonna put negative three in for X and evaluate what that is. So in our P function, let's rewrite this. Wherever you see an X, take out your X, put in a negative three, make sure it's in a bracket. So negative three squared minus seven times negative three plus three. So I'm just going to evaluate P of negative three. This would give me nine plus 21 plus three. Uh, P of negative three would give me 33. To that, I'm going to subtract, okay, Q at negative three. So Remember when we subtract, we always want that second function to be in a bracket. So Q at negative three, uh, let's take that X out and let's put in a negative three in a bracket. So two times negative three plus nine. What does that give us? That gives us uh, two times negative three is negative six plus nine. And we are subtracting. So negative six plus nine gives me three. So it's this function, P of negative three is 33 minus, if you just evaluated this, right? Two times negative three plus nine, what you would get is three there. So it's this function minus this function and our answer is 30. Okay, so that's one way you could do this. Method one is evaluating each function at negative three and then uh, doing the operation, which is subtracting. The other way you could do this is ignore the negative three for now and just say P of X minus Q of X, right? Because we know that's what we're doing. So P of X was this guy here. So basically what I'm doing, you guys, for this one, I'm getting the explicit equation. And then I'm going to subtract Q of X. Whenever I subtract, I must put Q of X in a bracket. So Q of X is two X plus nine. Get rid of your bracket by distributing in that negative one. and you would get this. From here, let's combine our like terms. So I've got no other X squared to join it with, so I'm just gonna bring down that X squared. Uh, X's go together, so negative seven minus two gives me negative nine X. And then let's do our constants. So three minus nine gives me negative six. This is my explicit equation. And now what I need to determine 
in this equation is when x is negative 3. Okay, so when x is negative 3, once you have your explicit equation, you're going to take out your x's and you're going to put in negative 3. What you would get, negative 3 squared is 9. Negative 9 times 3 is plus 27 and minus 6. Here, uh, 27 minus 6 is 21, plus 9 is 30. So again, it doesn't matter if you figure out what the explicit equation is first and then substitute in a negative 3 for that explicit equation, or evaluate p of negative 3, evaluate q of negative 3, and then perform the operation. You will get the exact same answer. I think in your homework it says um, use it two different methods, right, to give you practice to see which one you would prefer, and then eventually it will just say whichever method you prefer. So when it says two different methods, make sure that you guys are doing both methods so that um, you are comfortable with that. Okay, next thing we're going to do is let's multiply our functions. So multiplying functions, you're going to see um, it written in one of two ways. This is f, time, f of x times g of x. So f times g of x is the same thing as writing the equation to look like this. Okay, so how we do that is, uh, again, we're going to pick values. And remember what I taught you uh, with that last example. We need to pick x values that are defined or common to both functions. So for example, this f of x function, this graph right here is f of x, right? The smallest x value is that point there. So that is the smallest x point that I'm going to pick, which is zero. And then um, one looks like a nice point, right? Because I could see it on f of x and I could see it on g of x. So let's pick one. And then um, I'm not going to pick two because I can't tell what it is on f of x. I'm not going to pick three. Four, I could tell on that graph and on that graph. So I'm going to pick four. So there's only really three nice points. I could pick. Okay, so I'm going to pick blue for my f of x. So when x is zero, the corresponding y value is also zero. Um, at one, the corresponding y value is one. And at four, the corresponding y value is two. If we went to g of x now, so this parabola is g of x. When x is 0, again, I'm on my g of x graph. The corresponding y value is 0. Um, 1 is right here. Here is my y. Here's where my graph is at when x is 1. The corresponding y value is negative 1. And then when x is 4 on my g of x graph, it would be right here, which corresponds to 8. Okay, h of x, which I'll do in green, is the combination function when we multiply f of x and g of x. So remember that uh, we apply the operations on the y values. So 0 times 0 gives me 0. So my new h of x coordinate would be the x stays the same and it's only ever the y that changes. One times negative one is going to be negative one. So my x value stays the same and my new y value is negative one. Okay, uh, my new h of x graph, the x coordinate is four and the y value is going to be two times eight, which is 16. So it's going to be at four. 4, comma 16. Sorry, that looks terrible. Um, I will fix that.
All right, so it's going to be difficult to um, draw this. And again, this was an example from the textbook, and it's well, I don't really like the textbook questions too much, but zero, zero is going to be on h of x, one comma negative one. So the point's going to start here. It's going to go down to here, and then it's going to go to four comma 16. So four comma 16 is going to be like way up here off my screen. So what I'm going to draw, if we had a better graph, it would look something like this. It would go down, touch, and then it would go back up. And at 4 and 16, there would be a point. This should actually be a nice smooth curve. So my, my graph doesn't look that nice, but it should be a nice smooth curve. Let's see if I can make that a little bit better. Yeah, and then it would eventually hit 4 and 16. Okay. So what are the domain and the range of each function? So let's do f of x. The domain of f of x, so I'm just going to draw this in blue. This was f of x. The domain of this graph was x was greater than or equal to 0. The range of this graph was y is greater than or equal to zero. So for this blue graph, my domain and range are, is x and y is greater than or equal to zero. For the parabola, so the parabola I'm gonna do red, and I'm gonna, they call that g of x, okay? For the parabola, if I said to you like, okay, well, what's the domain of a parabola for math 20? This goes forever in both directions. So the domain um, for a parabola is XER. The range for a parabola, you either have a biggest or a smallest Y value. And this right here was your smallest Y value. Your parabola is bigger than this Y value of negative one. So the range would be Y is greater than or equal to negative one. Okay, for my new graph, which is um, this green graph here, which is h of x. The domain of this guy is x is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so that's the domain. And the range of this graph, we can't actually get the range unless we look at our calculator and we look at VARs on our calculator. So we're going to do the range um, in a minute. We're going to figure out, we're going to get this graph, this uh, green graph on our calculator using VARs, and we will do that with C. Okay, so let's actually uh, skip to C, and we're going to determine the explicit equation first, and then we're going to graph it on our calculator, and we're going to get the range, and we're going to verify. So again, going down to C, when you see this, that is the same thing as y is equal to f of x times g of x. y is equal to f of x, they told me, was this equation here, square root of x, times g of x is this equation here. Now, what I'm going to do for g of x, because this is more than one term, more than one term always deserves a bracket. So I'm going to put that guy in a bracket, and I'm going to write g of x, they said was x minus 1, close bracket, squared, minus 1. Okay? So this, and you know what, you guys, whenever we have something crazy like this, um, I do not need you to expand this in any way. I am good enough for you saying this is what the explicit equation is. It's just f of x times g of x. So don't worry about having to expand something like this. Okay, let's verify on our calculators. So let's type in y1, f of x, which is the square root of x. 
So we're going to clear all of this. And in Y1, that f of x graph they said was the square root of x. In Y2, it was the parabola. And they said that the formula for the parabola was x minus 1. Close that bracket and square it, minus 1. Okay, I don't actually want to graph these. So I'm going to deselect each graph by turning off the equal sign. And what I want to do is I want to graph this times this is what I want to graph, okay? So using in Y3, using vars, uh, we're going to go over to Y vars and we're going to graph a function and we're going to do Y1 times Y2. So vars, Y vars, number one, and then we're going to hit Y2. Um, I'm not even going to bother in Y3 punching in the explicit equation because we know that Y3 is going to show me this times this. Okay, so now when I go to graph, there's my graph there. Let's double check a couple of things. Like, let's double check this coordinate here at 4, 16. So how I could double check that coordinate is I could double check in one of two ways. I could go um, second function table and I could go down here. So when X is four, Y is 16. So that's one way I could check. I could also go uh, second function calculate and I could type in number one for a value. And I'm gonna type in when X is four, what's the corresponding Y value? And it's off my screen, but it's 16. This is very close to what our graph looked like. They asked for the domain of this graph, which was X is greater than or equal to zero. In order to get the range of this graph, we need to figure out what that smallest Y value is. That's called a minimum. So you would have done this in 20-1. So go to your calculator. And if you have this typed in with me, go to second function calculate, which is your trace button. We're gonna look for number three, which is a minimum. Okay, so my, um, I'm currently off my screen. My, my point, my cursor is way up here. So I'm going to select the left arrow. I want to find this vertex. So it says to go left of the vertex. So I'm going to go left of the vertex. Hit enter. Now it tells me to go right of the vertex. So I'm going to hit the right button and go right of it and hit enter. And whenever it says guess, that just means you hit enter again. So my Y value, it looked like it was negative one, but it's actually slightly lower. It's negative 1.05. So if I said, what's the range of this? Uh, the range would be Y is greater than or equal to negative 1.05. And you can only get that if you do VARs on your calculator. So the range is Y is greater than or equal to negative 1.05. Okay, now one last thing I want to show you. I'm just going to quickly check if this is on your note package. Yes, it is. Okay, so I've got um, this. Where is it? I've got this line here. Okay, so what it says is it says note. The domain of combined function is the domain that is common to both f of x and g of x. So this is something that I want you to star. And this is something that would go on your study guide and like an example like this would go on here. So I'm gonna show you, you guys, how you could show the domain using a line, okay? So here's what happens. My, um, one of my graphs, which was my f of x graph, the domain of this graph was x is greater than or equal to zero. So what I'm gonna do is on this number line, I'm gonna put zero here. And the domain of this graph, how you would show this on a number line, it could have been zero, so X could be zero, or X could be any number greater than zero. So I'm just gonna like highlight this in blue. So one of my graphs, the domain was X was greater than or equal to zero. 
The other graph, which was red, and I guess I'll do this in pink. So the other graph was my parabola, which was G of X, right? And G of X was X E R. So if I said, well, what would X E R be? It could be any value, right? It could be zero, it could be greater than zero, it could be less than zero. This would be the domain of my parabola. The domain of the combined function, it says, is the domain that's common to both f of x and g of x. Common means the domain that overlaps. So just for common, write the word overlap. So if I said, where do these two graphs overlap? They overlap right at this point here, right? They are both highlighted at x is greater than or equal to zero. And so what you could do is you could figure out your domain or the overlap uh, by doing the domain of both functions and then figuring out where would these overlap and they would overlap at x is greater than or equal to zero. If you don't totally understand this, you'll see this in another example that I will do. So again, um, this is a really good thing to put on your study guides. Okay, verify uh, using bars, we've done that. Okay, let's go to our last function, which is dividing functions, okay? So f over g of x is the exact same thing as f of x over g of x. So let's find uh, nice points. And again, I'm going to give you guys a whole bunch of points. So instead of like looking, I'll just, uh, I'll give you guys the points. So I want you to do negative four point, negative three. So there's going to be a whole bunch, negative two, negative one, zero, and we'll do one, two, three. So all of these will give you nice points on f of x. So f of x I'm gonna do in blue, get the corresponding y values. g of x I'm going to do in red. And then we're gonna divide the y values for these two functions. So apply the operation to the y values. Okay, so f of x, you guys, which one is f of x? This guy here is f of x. The parabola this time is f of x. So when x is negative 4, you should be getting 6. When x is negative 3, it's right here, you should be getting 0. When x is negative 4, negative 3, Negative two, it's down here. That should be negative four. When x is negative one, we're at negative six. When x is zero, we're at negative six. When x is one, we are at negative four. So when x is one, that points down here. When x is 2, we are at 0. And when x is 3, we are at 6. Okay, so now find the corresponding y-coordinates on g of x. This linear graph is g of x. So uh, when x is negative 4, you should be getting negative 6. When x is negative 3, you should be getting negative 5. This guy should be negative 4, negative 3. OK, so those should be your points. Your new y values are when you divide f of x by g of x. So I want you to write the new y values. And I want you to write the new corresponding point. And then I want you to graph that. And something interesting will happen with this graph.
Okay, negative six divided, or sorry, six divided by negative six is negative one. So negative four, uh, negative one. Zero divided by negative five. You could do that on your calculator. Zero divided by negative five is zero. And you would get negative three comma zero. Negative four divided by negative four is one. Negative six divided by negative three, two negatives will give you a positive two. Uh, negative six divided by negative two, again, is a positive and we'd get three. So that would be zero comma three. Okay, negative four divided by negative one, four divided by one is four. And we would get, uh, what would we get? One comma four. This one, I hope you guys star this one. Zero divided by zero. You could never divide a number by zero. So if you try to type in zero divided by zero on your calculator, we cannot do that. It does not exist. So this point either does not exist or is undefined. Okay. Uh, this one, six divided by one is six and the coordinate would be three comma six. Now I'll show you what this undefined point looks like and it's gonna tie in something that we did a couple of units ago. So let's start plotting these points of h of x. So h of x is equal to f of x divided by g of x. So negative four comma negative one. Uh, negative three comma zero. Negative two one. Negative one two. Zero comma three. Negative one comma two. Yeah, it looks good so far. One comma four. Undefined. So when x is two, when x is two, normally we want to put a point there, but I'm going to put a hole there because the point does not exist there. And then I'm going to jump to three comma six. Which would be right here. OK, so this gives us a linear graph with a hole in it. So take your rulers. and draw your graph skipping over your hole. And then we'll see when we do the explicit equation why there's a hole in this graph, okay? So let's do the domain and range of each function. Okay, so um, again, f of x, this time f of x, you guys, was this parabola. So f of x is x e r, is the domain of a parabola. The range I will give you, um, we would have to punch this into our calculator and get the minimum. It's not actually negative six. If we were to punch in the equation in our calculator, it would give us um, y is greater than or equal to negative 6.25. So that's the range. G of X now is this linear graph. So the domain of G of X is X E R. And the range of G of X, it's a linear graph, so Y E R. H of X, okay. Domain of H of X is going to be, um, I'm kind of running out of room. 
it was X. Remember, X cannot be equal to. So tell me if there's any restrictions. And the restriction is X could not be equal to two. But other than that, X is a set of real numbers. That's the domain. The range of this graph, because I have a whole, tell me the restriction on Y. Y cannot be equal to five, but other than that, Y belongs to the set of real numbers. Okay. Okay. Um, given the graphs of f of x, so here's now the equation, right? So you wouldn't have been able to get the range of that one parabola, which is this guy here, unless you actually graph this on your calculator and got the minimum value. But uh, this is our f of x, this is our g of x. They want the explicit equation for uh, f of x over g of x. So let's figure that out for them. So y is equal to f of x over g of x. Um, y is equal to f of x, what's this guy? Divided by g of x was this guy. Okay, so f of x divided by g of x. Now, this, remember, is going to give me my non-permissible value. So my non-permissible value um, is going to be at x is equal to 2. But remember, we're now going back to our unit on radicals and rationals, and this is a rational. And in order to figure out if this NPV is a whole or is it just a vertical asymptote, what we need to do is we always need to factor this numerator. So to factor the numerator, I'm looking for what gives me a product of negative six and what gives me the sum of one. So that answer is gonna be two and three, and it's gonna be a negative two to get a plus one, negative two plus three. So that would be, if we were going back to that unit on radicals and rationals, so you factor this numerator, and we're gonna have x minus two, and we're going to have x plus 3. In my denominator, I have x minus 2. So now we are right back to where we were in radicals. And we say, okay, before I cross anything out, I'm going to say that x could not be equal to negative 2. So I know that that is a non-permissible value. And because it is common, so those of you that were doing like the highlighters to do this, remember that if you have a common factor in both numerator and denominator, what that denotes is a whole. So there is a whole at x is equal to negative two. The new explicit equation is going to be h of x is equal to, you write down what's left over, so x plus three. And then what we always have to do when we do division is you always have to say comma, and you must tell me, is there any non-permissible values? x cannot be equal to negative two. So this would be my equation. If I said, what's the point of the whole? Well, I know that this is my equation here. If I put in a negative 2, whenever I see x, negative 2 plus 3 gives me a whole at x is negative 2 and y is 1. So let's see if that's where the whole was. No. You guys, what did I do wrong? Um, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh my God. Okay. Yes. Thank you. This should be two. So x cannot be equal to two. There's a hole at two. If I put in two here, two plus three 
is going to give me five. So X cannot be equal to two. And there's a hole at two comma five. Remember, you're supposed to unmute when I do that. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do one last verification using VARs. So this is the last example that we will do where we will check this on VARs. So we're gonna type um, Y1 or F of X. Let's type in Y2, G of X. In Y3, let's use our VARs to do our quotient of these two functions. So go to your calculators, clear everything. Okay, so f of x, they told me, was x squared, so that was my parabola, x squared plus x minus 6. And my linear line was x minus 2, or my linear graph. Okay. Deselect both of these graphs. And now let's type in using vars y1 divided by y2. So in y3, go to vars, scroll over to y vars to function. Number one, it's a quotient function. And we are dividing it by y2. I'm not even going to type in the explicit equation because we, we know it's correct, right? Like this is the, it didn't ask for the explicit, or it didn't ask, so we don't need to do that. So let's just look at this graph. So there's the graph there. Let's see if there's a hole in this graph. So how could you check that there's a hole? So second function table, there's my hole right there. When X is two, there is an undefined point when X is two. The other way that you could check the whole is second function, calculate a value. And when X is two, which is right here, it doesn't show it, right? So a lot of students, like if they forget about this on the test, they'll just draw a straight line. But when X is two, there's a hole. It's there, it does not exist. There's no Y value at this point, okay? And then again, if you punched in X plus three, uh, that was our explicit equation. So if you want me to do that, x plus 3 should go right over. Now, the only thing is, remember, it's just to verify the shape of your graph. So it is correct. x plus 3, though, um, it wouldn't show the whole if I checked my table, right? x plus 3 would show the whole. Uh, using the VARS one, that's the one that would show the whole. Okay, so let's do a couple more questions algebraically. And then we're going to look at three diploma questions, and then I will give you a lot of time to do this work. Okay, so if f of x is equal to this, and g of x is equal to this, determine the values of f times g of 3. So remember, there's different ways you could do this. How I'm going to choose to do this is I really like method one. So I find method one is the easiest, which is solving f of three times g of three. That is method one. So what you would do in f, we're going to put a three in here and we're going to figure out what would that equal. So f at three, when X is three, what is the corresponding Y value? It would be two times three squared. Uh, three squared is nine, and uh, nine times two is 18 times G at three. So I'm gonna put a three here, a three here, and a three here. So G at three, uh, three minus four, Four is negative one. Uh, two times three is six. Okay. So we should get uh, negative one over six. So 18 times negative one over six. 
You could type this into your calculator if you wanted to, uh, but this is just multiplying fractions. You just multiply numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. So that would give me negative 18 over six, which is going to give me negative three. So F times G of three is negative three would be your answer. Okay, F plus G of one, again, what that means is that means F of one plus G of one. So F of one, I am now going to go to my F function and I'm going to put a one in when I see an X. So that would be two times one squared. Uh, two times one squared is two times one, which is two. Plus G at one. So you would then go to your G function and you would say, okay, I need to put a one in for here. So one minus four is negative three over two. A positive and a negative would give me, this would be two minus. Okay, this is over one. When we add or subtract functions, we've got to get common denominators. So I need to write this with a denominator of two. So I'm going to multiply this by two and that by two. Now I've got my denominator of two and my numerator would be two times two, which is four minus three, which is one. So this answer, F plus G at one is equal to one half. And I find this method, which was method one, uh, much easier than figuring out what the explicit equation is and punching in negative three into the explicit equation and punching in one into the explicit equation, especially when my equations aren't nice and one involves fractions, things like that. Okay, so from here, let's do this guy. So I believe this was a diploma question. So look what they've given me. They've given me f of x, g of x, and h of x. What they want is they want a simplified equation for j of x. Given that j of x, so my new combined function, is f of x divided by g of x plus h of x. So just say to yourself, okay, this is fine. I'm just gonna do exactly what they're asking for. So you'd say j of x is equal to f of x, which is this guy, divided by g of x, which is this guy, um, plus h of x, and h of x is this guy. Now, on the diploma, this was a multiple choice question, and what they had done is um, they further simplified this, because it says determine a simplified equation. So what you have to do in order to be able to add these two fractions together is you need to think about the rationals unit from 20-1 and you need to have common denominators, right? So like up here, I had common denominators. If you have common denominators, you write what your denominator is and then you could simply add or subtract your numerators. So they made it nice and easy, right? They did not want to complicate things. So they did X minus two and X minus two. So that is a common denominator and the denominator is X minus two. What you would then do from here is you would add or subtract your numerators. So it is this numerator plus this numerator. Normally I would say, 
let's put this numerator in a bracket. But because we're not subtracting, right? Subtracting is where we need to distribute the negative one. Because we're just adding, I don't even need to bother putting that guy in a bracket. So 2x squared plus x. I would if we were subtracting, but we're not. Okay, so then from here, if this was like a diploma question, you should be able to uh, further simplify this. So let's look at the numerator and let's join our like terms. So there's no other x squared. Um, so bring that down. Let's join our x's together. So negative 7 plus 1 would give me negative 6x. Oh, wait a second. Sorry, there is. There is a 2x squared. Yes. Thank you. Let me fix that. Subtract all this. Hey, you guys are absolutely right. 1x squared and 2x squared. Those would be like terms. So that would give you 3x squared. And then the x's would go together. So negative 7x's plus 1x's would give you negative 6x's. And then x minus 2. So we get to here. You would have looked at your a, b, c, d on the test, and they still wouldn't have matched. And the reason why it wouldn't have matched is because you could actually factor out from the top. So if I said, uh, this goes back to factoring by GCF, okay? If I said, what could you take out of a 3x squared and a 6x? So I'll just do this off to the side. 3x squared minus 6x. I hope you see that what you could divide out of each of these is a 3x. So the GCF is a 3x. And what you would get is x minus uh, 6 divided by 3 is 2, and x over x cancels. So this could be further factored by taking out that 3x. And you would get an x minus 2. The denominator had an x minus 2. So this gives you a non permissible value at x is equal to 2, right? NPV at x is equal to 2. And then is this a whole or is it a VA? It is a whole. So what the final answer was, and let's just say it was D or whatever the answer was, J of x is equal to 3x was the simplified equation, comma, x could not be equal to 2. And there was a hole there. And then if I said, well, if one of the questions, maybe uh, they did a numerical response and they said, okay, well, what's the corresponding y value at that hole? So when x is 2, if I put a 2 in here, 3 times 2 would be 6. That would be the whole or the point of discontinuity. And that would be your answer for your simplified equation. OK, let's do um, one more question where we have graphs. OK, so we'll review this together. Uh, last year I assigned this for homework, but what we will do is I'll set it up and then I'm going to pick four different people to give me the answer. So A, I'm going to write A over here. It is the product of those two functions. So F at negative 2 times G at negative 2. So remember at negative 2, find the corresponding y values on the blue graph and the red graph. B is a product function again. It is f of 1 times g of 1. C is f of 0 divided by g of 0. So again, at 0, um, on the blue graph, your y value is negative 1. 
on the red graph, your y value is one. So figure out what that is. And then d, f of one over g of one. And you guys, none of these should be undefined. So take a minute to find those. And then I will pick four people to give me those answers. Okay, f at negative two times g at negative two. Cyril, do you have that one for me? Um, I got negative three. Yes. And if any of you don't get these, you could either unpause to ask, or you could just stay at the end of class and I'll go through it with you. Uh, the next one, Rian, could you give me uh, f of one times g of one? What did you get for that guy? Zero. Okay, so you know what? I didn't get two because I got that this guy was two. Rian, what did you get f of one to be? Here is zero. Yes. So what's anything times zero? That guy would be zero. Okay. Um, F of zero divided by G of zero. Um, Oscar, what did you get for C? F of zero divided by G of zero. Um, I'm not really sure. Okay, know. so. Oscar, let's just do this one together, F at zero. Okay, so Oscar, here's zero right here. What is this value right here on the F graph? What's that corresponding Y value? Negative one. Negative one over, okay, go back to zero. Here's X is zero. And here is G of X. What's that corresponding Y value? One. Yes. So then negative one divided by one, you would just say is negative one would be your answer. Okay, last one, F of one divided by G of one. Um, Kenzie, could you tell me what you got for that one? Would it be zero? It would be because you should have gotten zero divided by two zero whenever it's on the numerator and I've got a number on the denominator, that answer is zero. Yep, so those are your answers. Negative three, zero, negative one, and zero. Okay, before I talk about the homework and what I want you to do, let's actually go through some diploma questions and then I'm gonna talk about the homework and there's two difficult questions in the homework that we will do. Okay, so these diploma questions should be right in your note package. Um, what it says is it says, it gives us two graphs. This graph is F. So let's actually write F of X here. And this graph is G. So I'm gonna write G of X. So normally they we've been doing both of these on the exact same graph, but they just gave it to me on two different graphs. Okay, and that's fine. And what they want, want is they said, okay, if you had these two graphs and you subtracted these two graphs, what would the range of H of X be? So what we do, remember, is we always set up a little table of values. And we're gonna get um, X values that exist on both. And we're gonna get Y values on the F of X graph and Y values on the G of X graph. And then we will get our H of X. So when they're not on the same graph, remember we have to have uh, X values that are on both. So I'm gonna look at this graph here, which is um, my F of X. And they're saying that X is negative two over here. I'm gonna to go to here and I'm gonna say, does negative two exist? And it does. So I'm gonna write down negative two. Then students will often say, well, okay, like what should I pick next? Like, should I pick negative one next? Nope. Should I pick zero next? 
this one's slightly off. Should I pick one next? Let's see if I could do one. So that guy works. One does not work on this graph. But look at this graph has a two. And this graph has a two. So the X values that work for both graphs are negative two and two. So what I want you guys to do is figure out now what are the Y values. So at negative two, which is right here, negative two, what's the corresponding Y value on my blue graph? And at negative two, what's the corresponding value on my Y graph? Or, or my, my um, G graph. So the corresponding Y value at negative two here should be negative four. And on my G graph at negative two, it was at two. Then if you go to X is two, okay, so here's X is two. On my F graph, the answer is eight. And at two, on my G graph, the answer is negative four. H of X, they said, was subtracting the two functions. So H of X would be uh, negative four minus two is negative six. And two, uh, two negatives give you a positive. So this would be 12. So now to see what this new h of x would look like, it doesn't matter which graph you put it on. I just need to, like, I just kind of want to see what this graph is going to look like. So I'm going to graph, um, one of my points is at negative 2 comma negative 6. So negative 2 comma negative 6. And my second point is at 2 comma 12. 8, let's just say that's up here. Okay, my h of x, if I connected these two points, would look like this. And this would be my graph of h of x. What the question is, and it was a multiple choice question, it was what is the graph, or sorry, what is the range of h of x? So range is the biggest and smallest Y values. This was my biggest Y value at 12. That's my biggest Y value. My smallest Y value is this one here at negative six. So this was the range of H of X if it was an interval notation. If it was in set builder notation, it would look like this. So because it's a diploma, diploma normally does set builder. And the answer was this guy. So again, how you would do this is remember, if I give you two graphs, and if they're on separate graphs, it does not matter, right? You need X values that work for both graphs. You then find the corresponding Y values, and then you do whatever operation they want. In this case, it was a difference. So that's how you would do number 15. Okay, this one here. Again, they gave me two functions, G of X and F of X. So I'm going to write down, they said that this guy is G. And they said that this guy is F. And they're two totally different functions. They're on different uh, grids. And again, that doesn't matter. So what we normally do, um, and they want us to subtract G of X minus F of X. So normally what we do is we always set up a table of values. And we're going to get x coordinates that work for both. And then I'm going to put g first because they've got g first because I'm going to be subtracting f from g. So I'm going to put g of x here. And then they say uh, h of x is 
going to be g of x minus f of x. So I'm going to put f of x here. And then when I subtract, right, actually I won't use green, but when we subtract, we would get our h of x. Okay, so that's what we would set up. Without even reading anything in the question, we would set this up to look like this. Then you say to yourself, okay, so what are like the X values that they want me to choose? Because you'd say there's a lot of X values, right? So what the question says is the question says possible points on the graph of H of X, and they give me four possible points. And they want to know, like, which of these points exists on the new graph of H of X. What this is actually giving you, the hint that this is giving you, is remember, you guys, the X values don't change. It's only the Y values that change. So these are the X values that they want you to use. Because remember, like, we take the same X values on both graphs and we figure out what the corresponding y values are, and then the x coordinate doesn't change. So this here is giving you the hint of what they want you to choose your, what they want your x values to be. So I'm gonna go in descending order of x. So I'm gonna write this negative four first. I'm going to write negative two second. I'm going to write zero, and then I'm gonna write two. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find what are the corresponding, uh, y values on g of x so over here so when x is negative four right here is negative four g of x would be negative two when x is negative two g of x would be negative four when x is zero here's zero g of x, the y value would be negative 2. And when x is 2, which is right here, it's on the graph, y is 0. I'm going to do the same thing, and I'm going to find the y values on my f graph. So when x is negative 4, here's negative 4. There's the point on the graph that's at 3. When x is negative 2, Right here, it's the vertex, which is at four. When X is zero, it's on the Y axis, it's three. And when X is two, it's on the X axis, the Y value is zero. Okay, we were subtracting G minus F. So subtract these points here, or these y values. Negative two minus three gives me negative five. Um, negative four minus four gives me negative eight. Negative two minus three gives me negative five. Zero minus zero gives me zero. Okay, so now I'm gonna just check, and I'm gonna check mark, if any of these points are these given points. So negative four comma negative five right here. So that would be negative four, negative five. That is on the graph of H of X. So I'm gonna put a check mark there. Negative two, negative eight is on H of X. So this guy, negative two comma eight is not on the graph because it has to be negative two, negative eight. Zero and negative five would be on H of X. This guy is a point that exists on H of X. Two comma zero exists on H of X. The three points listed above that exists on the graph of Y is equal to H of X are numbered point one, point two, and point four. Okay. And then the very last uh, diploma question that I want to do with you 
is this guy here. And I'd accidentally put some of the work in for it, but that's fine. So now they're giving me two different functions. F of X is one of my functions. G of X is the other function. They're giving me a table of values, which we're going to look at tomorrow. And they're giving me a graph. So what it says, H of X, they want to be is F of X over G of X. What is the value of H of three? So how we would do that, H of three is simply going to be F of three divided by G of three. So F of three, I need to go to my F, which was this one. When X is three, remember um, when they say F, of three, that is always your x value. So when x is three, the corresponding y value or the answer is six. Then they want me to go to my g graph. When x is three on my g graph, here's three. What's that corresponding y value? And g of three is one. This was a numerical response, and the answer is six. Uh, usually, you guys, for diplomas, and I know you're not writing a diploma, but um, usually I get 100%, like my students always get 100% on function operations on the diploma. Like it's often every single question that they'll do from function operations, you guys usually get um, always right, I find. Okay. So let's go back to the homework and we will talk about the homework now. I believe everything is the same in your homework except for uh, number four on page 18. I want you to only do 4A. So if you could just add that for me. And then, um, so it's remember this was three different lessons that we essentially did. And this will be all of your homework. For your podcasts, uh, those of you that are up to date with your podcasts would have watched one ABC to ABC. So this should be done. What you want to do tonight, so if it was helpful, like I remember like in quarter one, the students said it was super helpful watching for this unit, these podcasts ahead. So those of you that are sort of following that and just want to really be able to understand what's happening uh, during the lecture, this is what you'll want to be able to watch tonight. So 3AB, she's got um, 3C done twice, but they're two different videos. So watch these four videos. And like I said, uh, it's maximum of 20 minutes for these videos. Okay. I want to do two questions with you that uh, students always have a little bit of trouble with. And those two questions are on page 12. So they're eight and nine. So we're going to do those two. And then I'm going to let you guys go and do this work. So if you want to go to page eight, or sorry, not to page eight, uh, to page 15. So these two questions are on page 15. So open up your workbook to here. And again, they're giving us a question in just a different way. So they gave us two different graphs. So again, where I am is that I am on page 15. Okay, so they gave me two different graphs, f of x and g of x, and then they gave me points. So what we always do is remember that we're going to look for x values that are common to both. Then we're going to figure out the y values. Um, I'm going to put f first because it's going to be f minus g. So the y values on f of x. Then the y values on g of x. And then um, our new graph, I'll just call H of X. 
Okay, so what I would do is if they already give you ordered pairs, this is the X and that's the Y, right? So they're saying when X is two, Y was five on F of X. So this is the Y value on F of X. Now I'm gonna to go to G of X, okay? When X was two, Y is six, right? So remember your X values were the same for both graphs. You get the Y values, and then we're gonna perform the operation just on the Y values. Next, I'm gonna write down four. So let's write down four next. So when X is four, on my F graph, the Y value is 15. Here's my G graph. When X is four, the Y value on my G graph is 30. Now students will say to me, well, should I put seven for X? And I would say, well, remember, the point has to exist on both graphs. So this guy has a seven, but on my G graphs, I don't see a seven. So I'm not gonna include seven. And then again, I'd say like, would it make sense to put this three? Well, three is a point on my G graph, but it's not on my F graph. So the only points that I would put down would be two and four. And then the operation was F minus G. So we're going to subtract these Y values. This would give me negative one. This would give me negative 15. The points are two comma negative one is going to be on H of X and four comma negative 15. So the question was, um, which of the following points must lie on our new graph? This is my combined graph. Well, I know that these two points must lie on and it is only this one that exists, right? Because that matches with this guy here. Uh, three, remember three was on G of X, but not on F of X, so we can't select three. Zero was on neither graph, so we can't select zero. So that's how I would do number eight. For number nine, um, it gives me f of x is that equation, g of x is this equation. And I've never shown you when we put a two in front. So what I'm going to do is right now just ignore this two. You guys know that this is the exact same thing as g of three minus f of three. So I'm just going to calculate what is g of three minus f of three. Whatever answer I get, I'm then going to multiply it by two because it's two times that answer. So g of three, here's my g graph. I need to put a three in here and a three in here. So g of three would be five times the square root three times three is nine. Five times the square root of nine is three. Five times three is 15. That's what G of three is. F of three, here's my F function. If I put in a three, I have the square root of three times three, which is nine minus two. Square root of nine is three minus two. Three minus two is one. G of three is 15. F of three is one. They want me to subtract G minus F. So that gives me 14. Then this answer here now is 14 but there's a two in front of it. So it means multiply whatever answer you get by two. 14 times two is 28. And it says to the nearest 10. So we would have to tack on a point zero. 28 
28.0. Okay, so that is your homework. I'm going to uh, stop recording this lesson. So just give me a minute to do 